Hello, this is Billy from Vega Neutral, and welcome to our course on how forward exchange contract points are priced. This is by far one of the most frequently asked questions from everybody, from clients, from traders, from private individuals looking to invest. And it is almost like people don't understand how something can be so easy, yet the market makes it appear so complex. The reason why we are talking about how forwards are priced is because it becomes fundamental to understand in everything that builds on top of that. Like for example, if you want to take the course on how options are priced and how options work and structuring using options, you're going to have to understand how forwards, how forwards are priced and how forwards fits in in relation to everything else. So the purpose of doing this course is for you to understand exactly how easy it is to understand how forwards are priced. will help you understand exactly how banks create a forward and secondly how the points are calculated. This course will also help you understand why it is called a forward exchange contract. In other words, why is there an obligation from the client to transact in the future date? So let's start by using an example. John over here wishes to purchase one million dollars in three months time from a bank. So he calls up the trader and asks, could you give me a price on $1 million that I wish to buy from you? The trader looks at her quote screen and quotes John the current dollar rand spot exchange rate, which is 10 rands to the dollar. John says, okay, well, what if I need that price for a delivery date three months from today? The trader now has to adjust the spot rate to take into account that the settlement of this trade is only required in three months from now. So in other words, the spot rate needs to be adjusted with forward points. So she comes back and quotes John a rate of 10.1990. In other words, in three months from today, John can come to the bank and purchase dollars at a rate of 10.1990. But that rate is guaranteed now already. We don't have to wait for three months to see where the spot is then. This is the rate that John's going to commit to right this second. Now John sits there and wonders, why is the bank quoting me 10.1990 when just a second ago they showed me a rate of 10? Let's see if we can explain this. How exactly does a bank create a forward? Now the one thing to understand is that a bank doesn't sit on spare cash. I mean the function of a bank is to facilitate trade. So in other words, they won't necessarily sit on your trades and your risk for the sake of it. If possible, they would like to have a trade done where they've mitigated all the risk uh, that exists in the trade. Now, don't get me wrong, banks do take risk, but it, that's, th that's their own risk that they decide to take, not as a result of your ticket. So in this instance, because the bank does not sit on a pool of dollars, it physically has to go into the market and buy dollars on behalf of John, because they know that they need to give these dollars to John. So with the current spot rate being 10 Rand per dollar, the bank, in order to receive the dollars, would have to pay someone on the other side 10 million Rand. So for example, Let's say this bank is a South African bank buying dollars from a US bank. The US bank doesn't know that there's a trade with John. In fact, the US bank doesn't care that there's a trade with John and it wants its rands now. So the bank itself has to physically settle 10 million rand for the dollars that it just bought in spot. Now, having said that, the bank also don't have 10 million rand sitting, uh, sitting aside. The, tr the trader on the desk doesn't have an extra pool of funds that he can just allocate towards this ticket. So what, that ha what then has to happen is the trader has to go internally to his own money market desk and ask if they can borrow the 10 million rand for three months. Because they know in three months time, John's going to come to them and require the dollar. But guess what? John is settling them in rand. So th at that point, they're going to receive enough rand to repay this loan obligation that they've created. So in summary, what has happened here? The bank went into the spot market and purchased the dollars that it knows it requires to give John in three months from today. But similarly, the other bank from which they bought the dollars needs to be settled, right? So the bank also goes and borrows 10 million rand to settle the other bank. From this point forward, it now becomes a money market transaction. There is no more spot obligation. So in fact, the spot rate in this equation, when we talk about forwards, is really only to determine how many rands exactly am I going to borrow? Am I going to go borrow 10 million rand 
or is it 9,960,000 or 10,120,000? The spot rate itself at this point when calculating a forward is purely to determine how much of the RAND do I need to go and borrow. And from here on forward, it becomes an interest rate equation because the bank now places the dollars on deposit for three months. The bank simultaneously also has to borrow the RAND for three months because remember, they don't have the RAND to pay the other guy. They'll have to wait for John to settle them. Now, a forward exchange contract has become a function of the interest rate earned on the deposit in relation to the interest rates charged on the RAND account, or in other words, the loan side of it. So we can now already determine in three months from today, how many dollars am I, am I going to receive when my deposit matures? And similarly, how many rands do I have to pay back to my money market desk? So we've effectively tied the rand and the dollar values together. So let's do the sums. If, it, if I place a million dollars on deposit at a rate of 0.5% for three months, the maturing value of that deposit will be worth $1 million and $1,263.89. Similarly, the, the RAND component that I borrowed from my money market side is also increasing in value. Remember, I've borrowed 10 million RANDs, but I'm being charged 8.5% interest. So by the end of the three months, I need to repay 10 million 211,917 plus 81 cents. At this point, it is fine to be confused because we haven't done anything yet. I haven't given you the, the equation as to how do we work out exactly what is a forward then? Because all I've done now is showed you how do we relate the money market equation. In other words, how do we get from spot to the three month equation? Now, if we've calculated the maturing value on my loan as well as my deposit, we've effectively linked the values with each other because now we can establish a relationship to say what is $1 worth in three months from today in the equivalent RAND amount in three months from today. We know that we've got a maturing deposit. Let's work the deposit down to a single unit value. So in other words, let's divide the de maturing deposit value by itself. So we take 1 million and 1,263 and 89 cents divided by itself says that is worth $1. We simultaneously take the RAND maturing value, which is 10, 211-917.81 and also divided by the same nominal we used for the dollar value because we said if that dollar divided by that value equals 1 what is the equivalent that that will equate to in rand so you'll see by dividing 10.2 million by the 1 million dollar nominal it works out to a rand exchange of 10.1990 what has happened here we've effectively worked out that the rand equivalent of a spot rate of 10 today is worth 10.1990 in the forward market because all we've done is we've worked out the time value of money in other words the cost of carry taking the deposit from today having it matured in three months time and taking the loan amount in rands today and having that matured in three months time effectively tying all this together we've worked out that an fec or forward exchange contract is in fact today's spot rate adjusted for time and as such, the forward points in this equation is 1990. And we've worked it out by just taking purely the interest rate differential that exists between the rand and the dollar. So in essence, the 1990 now is the forward points that you'll be able to add to your spot rate. A forward exchange contract, therefore, is nothing other than today's spot rate adjusted for time. And the only way that the bank could commit to provide John with the rate in three months from today was for them to go and do this money market transactions. Now it makes sense now. If the bank was going to do the money market transactions, can you see that they are 100% reliant on John coming to them in three months time and physically doing the ticket? Because if John wasn't there, then the bank would have done all this money market tickets and now be exposed to a risk because the reason they did the money market ticket was to give John the value in three months from today. So this is the reason also why it is called a forward exchange contract because John cannot walk away from this trade without some economic implication. So to summarize, in order to get the three month rate forward quoted to John, the bank had to work out what will be the equivalent interest rate differential for the next three months between the dollar on deposit and the RAND loan and charge that to John because that is the effective cost that it's gonna cost the bank taking the spot position and adjusting it for time. So by now you should be able to understand exactly how the bank creates a forward exchange contract and similarly 
how easy it is to actually calculate the forward points and that the forward points of any currency pair is literally just today's spot rate adjusted for time. Thank you very much for watching this, uh, the content. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. It's extremely easy, but it forms a fundamental part to everything else you will learn at Vega Neutral. This is Billy from Vega Neutral, and I hope to speak to you soon. Goodbye.